Hi, I'm Chuck Gagner, uh, one of the owners and president of Woodmaster Furnaces, Red Lake Falls, Minnesota. Would like to show you our new Clean Fire 400. Okay, some of the key features that we want to talk about on the Clean Fire 400 today are three very important items that we have designed into the product. And uh, they consist of a dry fire chamber, uh, unique to the outdoor wood stove industry, a pressurized boiler system, a two-stage that uh, um, handles up to 30 pounds of pressure and keeps the oxygen out of the system. And thirdly, the modulating control that is extremely easy to use. So let's start with the first one being the dry fire chamber. We have designed this furnace with a a dry fire chamber that, that has no water touching it. The reason for this is we create a hotter fire and we eliminate creosote buildup in the fire chamber. So I would like to explain the dry fire chamber. Uh, the typical outdoor wood stove has water touching the fire barrel. That clinches the flame and allows for creosote, which is smoke, ash, and moisture to stick to the steel. This can become very heavy and actually takes away from the efficiency of the heat transfer. Our dry fire chamber has no water touching it. Therefore, we have no creosote buildup because we're running a hot enough fire where that's eliminated. And secondly, we have no water corrosion from the backside. That is uh, known in the industry to be damaging to a furnace. We've completely eliminated that with the dry fire chamber. Uh, some of the other features of the dry fire chamber is how easy it is to clean. In the fall or in the spring of the year when you're done burning, you basically can clean this furnace out in a couple minutes with a small hand broom. It's that simple. And it stays nice and dry and it's gonna be protected for a long time that, because of that. The second thing I want to discuss is the pressurized boiler. Uh, we have a two-stage system. So we have a boiler surrounding our fire chamber with an airspace. Now we're collecting the radiant heat off in this dry fire chamber from the fire inside, and we're bringing that heat into the stage one boiler, which surrounds it. Uh, secondly, we have a catalyst in our furnace, so after the fire in the fire chamber leaves the fire chamber. It gets to the, a crossover tube with airports that inject secondary air. This blends air and fuel mixtures correctly so when it gets to the catalyst it is completely consumed by the catalyst so that there's no more fuel uh, to consume. It's all burnt. The stage two boiler which is surrounding the catalyst collects the heat that the catalyst has uh, generated. A lot of times the catalyst is designed to run in that 1500 degree Fahrenheit temperature and as it goes through the, the stage 2 boiler we're collecting that heat from 15, 1600 degrees down to 240 degrees leaving the chimney. That's a very efficient design. The third most important part of this furnace is the new control. This control is designed to be fully automatic other than just a start stop button and a reload button that you will normally work with when you're using the furnace. Um, the control actually knows the amount of BTUs that you're using in your home or building and it's going to burn at that rate. So we don't cycle on and off and cycling on and off is also generates smolder and creosote buildup and clogging boilers and, and boiler pipes and this and that. So our modulating control eliminates that. It knows that if you're using 30,000 BTUs in the home on a, a mild winter day, it's going to burn at a 30,000 BTU rate. It knows that if you're taking 100,000 BTU off in your home, it's going to burn at 100,000 BTUs. Um, so it's very smart when it comes to the 
produce, producing heat for what you need. Extremely smart. It's also very easy to use. Uh, basically, you have an, uh, you push any one of these buttons, which turns on the nightlight. And if you push and hold the start button, it, it now will go into cold start. And a little later on, we're gonna build a fire and show you how that's done. But when you push the cold start, or the start button and it goes into cold start, now we can light our fire. We light our fire with small paper and kindling, or small, with paper and small kindling, create a nice fire, and then add wood slowly until we get things all heated up. That's the way we want you to start your furnace. Um, when you have your furnace running and you have established coal bed and now you're just going to add fuel for the overnight uh, timeline that you're fueling for, uh, you will open the door just like you do our traditional wood masters. You'll throw in the amount of wood that you feel needs you need for that 12 hour burn or however long you want to burn. And when you shut the door, you're just going to push one button, which uh, puts the furnace into reload mode and allows the right amount of oxygen to the cat at a, at a certain time right away so that we don't lose the temperature in the cat. So those are the two functions that you're going to use on the control. Very, very simple. Everything else is pretty much fully automatic on the control. Um, very easy to operate. The Clean Fire 400 is ASME approved. Uh, our factory is certified to weld ASME vessels and we expect the life expectancy of this product to be in that 30 to 40 year range. Our fire chamber is actually replaceable down the road if we need to. Uh, just a few bolts and we can replace the fire chamber and insert a new one. So. Again, we feel the furnace is designed for a, a long, long time of service for you. So in designing this product, uh, we took a lot of time and uh, put a lot of effort into the longevity of the furnace, the features of the dry fire chamber, the pressurized boiler, and the smart control. Um, it's been over two and a half years of design work. And we're very proud of the, you know, the product we're offering. But one thing that I really want to point out to you is the EPA uh, number that we have produced with this Clean Fire 400. And that is at 0 0.07 pounds per million BTU. So we have passed the federal regulation of 2020 at 0.1. I think it's very important for you to realize how many stoves are on the market and who will be able to pass the 2020 requirement and who has already passed the 2020 requirement. Um, a lot of these stoves on the BurnWise site right now need to test with the new method before 2020. So if there are some low numbers there, that could change drastically. So keep that in mind when you're looking at the Clean Fire 400 at 0 .07 and already passing the 2020 requirement. The Clean Fire 400 was designed to give you years and years of reliable heat. We have designed the product with the dry fire chamber, an ASME pressure vessel that is, keeps the air out of the system. The Clean Fire 400 carries a 25 year warranty, the first 10 years being covered 100% and prorated thereafter. The electronics carry a two year warranty. A uh, very strong warranty in the industry. The Clean Fire 400 is rated at 102,000 BTUs and work has already started on the second model which are targeting about a 225,000 BTU unit. So just general maintenance on the Clean Fire 400 is very similar to our traditional Woodmasters. Uh, we remove the ash right through the fuel door. Depending on how much wood you're burning, how, you know, what type of wood you're burning, uh, depends on how much ash you're going to remove. But typically, I would anticipate cordwood with oak, um, in your average winter climate, you're going to be removing maybe five gallons of ash every week or every week to 10 days. That would be a general. 
Um, a couple other things that the Clean Fire is uh, very nice features on is the water volume. Uh, this system only ha has 55 gallons of water in the system. And therefore, we highly recommend you antifreeze 50-50%. It's a very small investment for a very good peace of mind. Um, if a pump fails, if a power outage happens, you're not worried about your system freezing up. It's, it's, it's almost a no-brainer. Um, the fuel door, as you can see, is uh, very, very well insulated. It has two sealing points so when you're burning this stove wide open you can hold your hand here it's probably 90 degrees it's very well insulated uh, it also has a, a spring tension to keep the door uh, tight at all times for a good seal the ash removal on the stage 2 boiler is uh, probably needed to be performed once during the season and once at the end of the season most of the ash stays in our fire chamber and because we are using a suction fan and a, and a very uh, gentle um, combustion process, we're not carrying the ash to the stage two boiler. Um, you can burn approximately two cords of wood through this unit and maybe remove a coffee cup full of ashes on the back ash pan door, which is a very nice feature. This rear access panel is only normally taken off once or twice a year for cleaning. Um, right here is our suction fan that pulls the fire through the system and directly below this is where the catalyst is located. Also inside here is the stage two boiler tubes that will need to be cleaned once or twice a year. Uh, very easy, remove this boot, these four handles, remove the cover and you have access to everything. Um, we also have safety devices in place, the low water cutoff, pressure relief valves, and high temp uh, snap disc. Besides that, moving down, we have an ash door located right here for the stage 2 boiler. This is the, the ash door that is very seldom used. The ash primarily stays in the fire chamber, but once a year we recommend you open this up and remove the ash out of it. Should be very little. The insulation is a fiberglass R38. Um, keeps the system insulated very well. The plumbing access door is located right here. It is very sizable to make your plumbing a very easy hookup. Okay, we'd like to give you a demonstration on how to light the furnace. Um, we want to show you the proper wood size that's required to do a good job on ignition. Uh, it's very important not to uh, use large wood when you're starting the fire for the first time. As you get a coal bed established and you're just reloading your furnace, yeah, you can put in the different size wood, whatever you have. Um, but when we get the uh, fire going here initially, I want to show you the fuel that we're going to use. And it's, it's smaller pieces in, in this size. We're going to stack this in there just kind of back and forth so we can get some air through it, get the flame going through it. And then I'm going to light the furnace up with this torch. Um, it's just faster, easier, quicker to do. I don't have a lot of paper and kindling laying around. So this really makes the job easy. Okay, we'll get it lit. As you can see, the fire or the wood load is stacked in there. I kind of mix it back and forth so we get flame running up through the wood, kind of like building a campfire. Very simple. Okay, now that our wood load is in there, we're ready to light up the furnace. What I'm gonna do is push the start button. Push and hold that for about three seconds. And that goes into cold start, our fan kicks up, everything's ready to go.
as we start the wood, you'll watch the catalyst temperature climb. We're going to torch this fire now until the cat temperature reaches 700 and above. This is only done when you're first initially starting it. Or if you let it go out because you didn't reload on time or you're gone for the weekend. So this is your basic startup process. We're at 190 degrees already. almost to 300 degrees. The other thing I like to watch, listen for, is as you're lighting this fire, you might get the cat up to 700 degrees fairly quick, but pay attention to the burning of the wood. When you hear it crackling and popping, you know you've got a good ignition on that load. Five hundred and fifty degrees. We are now past seven hundred degrees. I'm going to continue to torch because the cat climbed up very fast, but I want to make sure the, the wood load is lit properly. We're nearing a thousand degrees, so I'm going to pull the torch out and shut the door. Okay, now what you want to pay attention to is that your cat temperature continues to climb. Sometimes when you shut the door, um, when you take the torch out and shut the door, if the fire isn't established well enough, it will have a tendency to start dropping down. In that situation, you may have to torch it a little bit more or crack the door open to give it more air to get it going. We're still climbing at a nice pace. It's at 125 or 1125 degrees. On your initial startup, you're also going to see a lot of steam coming out of the stack. Uh, once we get our cat up to temperature, uh, we won't have smoke, but we'll have steam until we get this boiler up to 140 to 150 degree water temperature. And anytime you reload your furnace with fresh wood, you've got 25% of that moisture in there. You're going to see some steam coming out of this chimney. But with a warm cat, it'll be just steam.